the Valley Sports South and Valley Sports Southeast, the heart of the fan. Baseball on Valley Sports is presented by Truist. How about some Sunday afternoon baseball in Atlanta as the Braves and the Mariners square off for the third and final game of the series and we welcome you back to the booth. Happy to be back with you Brandon Gordon, Jeff Francoeur. Well the Braves last night a loss unfortunately Jeff but the Braves did what they've been doing all year long and that is jumping out early in the first inning. Well one way to get to 28 17 on your record is you score early and you put a lot of pressure on the opposition and that's what the Braves have done. Look, the MVP favorite right now leads off every game. It seems like he's on base. Olsen now starting to heat up the last three, four games. You've seen Sean Murphy and, of course, Riley Ozzie. These guys have been so good. And you're going to see right here the extra base hits leading all of baseball. Slugging percentage in the first inning, 6-10. And you see that 17 run scores in the first 10 pitches for the Braves. It's been outstanding. Hopefully you're going to see a little more of that today as the Braves are going against a tough pitcher in George Kirby for the Mariners. One of the best walk to strikeout ratios. And of course Jared Schuster hopefully can build off his last start in Texas. Gave you five innings. Going to need a little more today with uh, the bullpen a little banged up after yesterday. Yeah because it was a bullpen day yesterday so hopefully Schuster can indeed give the Braves a solid start. It is the rubber game of a three game series. The Braves and the Mariners. It's coming up next on Ballet Sport. By Synovus, number one in consumer banking satisfaction Southeast. And by the Xfinity 10G Network. The future starts now. Well, Sunday matinee at Truist Park. Mariners and Braves getting closer and closer to first pitch. Before we get there, let's go downstairs and join Nick Green. Thanks, guys. We know Jared Schuster in the first two starts this year struggled a bit. Eight and two thirds. He had eight walks, gave up eight earned runs. But the last time out against Texas, he was a whole lot better. Five innings of three run baseball, only two walks in that game. So I asked Rick Kranitz about Schuster's performance in Texas. He said it was definitely encouraging. He felt like the first two starts, he was rushing through the zone a little bit with his fastball, muscling up a little bit as well. So the velo and stuff wasn't quite as good. And what he saw last time out was a different Schuster as far as mechanics were concerned. He felt like he was more relaxed and it made him better able to execute pitches. The timing of the delivery was much improved and he gathered at the balance points which is something he didn't do in those first two starts just rushing a little bit and all of that helped him gain velocity and improve command which was way better the last start. Yeah I think that's exactly right and hopefully that will carry over here today Jeff. Yeah, look, Jared came out. I thought had a really good start last time, something to build on. Saw him in spring training, you know, and he had unbelievable numbers. Well, you get the regular season, things change, a little more, uh, you know, adrenaline going on, different thing. But I thought he did good, and we need a big start from him today. Well, let's see the lineup that he'll be facing presented by your local Toyota dealers. Crawford at the top. Julio Rodriguez, a young star, DH, and Kelnick will be the cleanup hitter. Suarez hit the homer yesterday, and he's driven in three in the series. He is batting fifth. Jeff, what do you have for the Ford Keys today? Well, we talked yesterday, uh, bullpen game again yesterday. So really, for Schuster, he only threw 66 pitches in those five innings. So give give me six innings at least. Give that bullpen a blow. And on the offensive side, look, George Kirby comes at you with a lot of fastballs. You can be aggressive. Only four walks this year to 41 strikeouts. So he pitches to get ahead. And let's win a series. How about let's that? Let's win a series. Absolutely. Braves looking for win number 29 of the season. Seattle trying to get back to 500. They are 22 and 23 into today's action. J.P. Crawford digs in. And the first pitch is in there at the top of the zone for a strike. Edwin Jimenez is the umpire back there today. And quickly 0-2. Jeff, you and I haven't called a game together in 10 days. Did you miss me? I did. I man. know. You know, just waiting to see you. Yeah, you were supposed to bring blueberries from your farm. You didn't do that, so that's one strike. That's high a ball and two strikes to J.P. Crawford early morning with four kids today. You know just hate to say it 
you weren't on my mind getting the blueberries. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. You can always count on that. And high and tight, two and two. So Nick mentioned it, a couple of walks last time for Schuster in that start in Texas. He really only had one struggle, and that was three consecutive batters in the fourth inning. This is a little flare to the left side of the infield. No problem for Riley, one away. But it was three batters in that start in Texas that got him. It went single, double, homer, and that was the three runs that he gave up in that game. Outside of that, he was really good. You know, I think it's like you go back to Washington, if you remember his start. When things unraveled a little bit with, you know, the pitch clock and everything, it was like he could not slow the game down. And so I think for him, that's a perfect situation. He pitched really well. He had one area where the game kind of sped up. And so I think the more that he can get comfortable out there, I think the better off he's going to be. Again, his, I know spring training, spring training, but he had great numbers. He's dealing here to tie France, 1-0 pitch. A ball and a strike. Yeah, the spring, 20 and two thirds for Schuster. Gave up just four runs, a 174 ERA. Well, and like anything, with the idea of where the Braves are at right now in the rotation with Freed and uh, Kyle Wright out for a while, someone has to take these innings. Right center, Harris was shaded that way, and he'll track it down. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, whether they want you, you want to believe it or not, you can't keep doing bullpen games till the end of July. You'll have no pen left. So, like you said, you need a couple guys to step up. And Schuster gave you a nice little start five days ago, and you'd like to see him continue to do that. Someone's got to take the ball. In the bullpen game yesterday, the Braves 0-3 now in bullpen games since having these issues in the starting rotation with the injuries to Kyle Wright and Max Free. There's a strike to Rodriguez. The young star, 22 years old, won't turn 23 until December. You know, when people think bullpen games, they say, oh, Tampa did it that whole year. What they did was they had a guy pitch an inning for sure as an opener kind of, but then they had a guy get a bulk of five innings. Just ahead of that. So you can sit there and say that, but it'd be it'd be like no different than you start Jesse Chavez today in the first inning for some of these righties if you wanted to. And then you bring Schuster in for five innings. Right. That's you know, look, you want to do that. That's great. But you have somebody eating a bulk of the innings. One two from Schuster just missed getting a one two three inning there as that one went off the glove of Darno. Well, I have a feeling over the next two to three weeks, something's going to change. Figure out how this rotation is going to settle. It has settle. to. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't. And, and like anything, you, you're trying to buy yourself a little time to see if one of those guys can really get on a nice run there in AAA and bring them up, and hopefully that's what happens. Obviously, Dylan Dodd has already been up for several starts. Michael Soroka yet to come back to the major league level, fighting his way back from injuries. Kelnick on deck, two down, two two count here in the top of the first. Jared Schuster making the fourth start of his major league career. And he misses down and it's full. Well, this has been for Schuster when the bases have been empty this year, 219 opposition sitting off him when there's been runners on, spikes up to 400. So hopefully he can keep Rodriguez off. Right field, Acuna over toward the line. For the third out. Good start for Jared Schuster. Good start for the Atlanta Braves. Half of the first. This lineup is presented by Guess Who? That's right, your local Toyota dealers. Acuna at the top. Darno will play today instead of Sean Murphy. Not only is he catching, he will be batting cleanup with Eddie Rosario behind him. And on the mound, and Jeff mentioned in the open, is George Kirby, a guy who throws a lot of strikes, Jeffrey. And you see his four road starts this year. He's going to come at you with a mid-90s fastball, four seams, sinks it a little bit, and then really splits it pretty evenly, about 15% of the time between the curve and slider. But as you said, only four walks this year. 
And there's a strike to start the game. 97 right down the chute to Ronald Acuna. And Kirby has been able to keep the ball in the ballpark, especially to right handed hitters. He's only allowed one home run to a right handed hitter his last 23 starts, which is hard to believe. Ooh. That was a generous call. We don't need him getting that corner like that no. today. <laughs> Edwin Jimenez giving him that 0 2 count. High and tight, but hopefully Acuna and the Braves can change those home run numbers today for George Kirby. Ten game hit streak for Ronald as he awaits and pops it up foul ground it'll reach the seats. And another one two up and in Ronald with a little look out at George Kirby we've seen high and tight fastballs to Ronald a few times this year. Hard hit guess what base hit Ronald Acuna a single here to start the bottom of the first. Jeff Ronald Acuna in the first inning is now 22 of 42 on the season. Yeah, and he's lucky that pitch right there was only a single and not into the left field stands for too high and tight and then hung a curveball. And telling you, it, it, the game is not as easy as he's making it look. It is unbelievable what he's doing. He has gotten the Braves off to such an amazing start in these first innings of ball games. And now Olsen down the line. It's fair. Ronald on his horse. He's coming home. Two batters in the Braves lead. Yeah, to go along with the open today. We talked about the first inning offense, and there you go. Six pitches in. Seven pitches in. One nothing runner in scoring position already. Unbelievable. And for Matt Olson, what a series. Got the two homers. Now he has three doubles in this series and five driven in. So, yeah, that first inning magic, which has been there all year long for the Braves, continues here today. See if Austin Riley can keep the train rolling. That's the pitch right there that the righty's got to lay off. He tries to get at 98, can run it in, a little bit up in the zone, and that, that's tough to hit. It's probably also tough to lay off, it though, is, right? It is, absolutely. Well, upstairs and out that time, and it's fouled away 0 2. It's good to see Olsen have a good series. You know, he, I read an article with him talking about he was disgusted with the strikeouts and frustrated, and he seems to have made a little bit of adjustment in early contact. Yeah, he still is tied for the major league lead in strikeouts with 64, Matt Olson. Kind of ironically tied with Teoscar Hernandez of the Mariners. But yeah, he said he wants those numbers to go down. It's the way you strike out too sometimes. You know, I get you're gonna get you're gonna swing at some stuff sometimes, but you know, for him, like he said, there were some balls 95 down the middle and you're just missing them. And those are balls, as he said, I gotta be able to put in play. He has put them in play this series. Another 0-2 to Riley. He does lay off that fastball up and in. Austin had a pretty good series in Texas including a homer. And he's gone there 98 outside and he went around there's one away.
Well, Sean Murphy getting the day off, so Travis Darno catching and hitting cleanup today. Strike 98. There you go, another fastball high. We've seen a lot of those. Well, and that's the thing. As a hitter, you know, and that's why I said be aggressive. I, I probably should have expanded. So be aggressive down because that's the thing. You know fastball's coming a lot early, so you're trying to get going, and that's what makes you swing at it. Seems he's a little lamp to this afternoon, too. I mean, he's sitting 98 right now. Yeah, routinely, he is letting it go. Just his second start ever against the Braves out in Seattle last September. He pitched really well against Atlanta, went six and gave up just one run, and it was unearned in a Seattle three to one victory over the Braves. Darno to the third baseman, Suarez, and there are two away. I tell you, when the Braves went to Seattle last September, the last game on getaway day might have been one of the best baseball games I have seen. In a long, long time. Braves were down, left for dead. Robbie Grossman and Michael Harris hit home runs, gave them the lead. Two home runs that game for Michael Harris. And then on the other side, the other rookie there, Julio Rodriguez, hit two home runs, hit a walk off to win it in the ninth. Yeah, I think it was 8 7. Yeah. And allowed the Mariners to win that series two games to one. Now the Braves try to do the same to the Mariners this year here in Atlanta. And then the Mariners played the Astros three games took them. I mean all the way to the ninth inning every game and lost but a little disappointing start. I think I thought I think they thought they were going to come out of the gate this year picking it up but kind of playing 500 ball. Yeah game below right now is Seattle. Eddie Rosario out to left Pollock is over. And he's got it. But the Braves have the lead. RBI double, Matt Olson. Feature of the game. Braves pitching National League ranks this season first in all of those categories. The only Astros pitchers have a better whip percentage in Atlanta. So Braves pitchers are striking out 26% of the batters faced. And I was talking about that game, Brandon. It was Suarez who walked it off, but Rodriguez tied it up with his second home run in the bottom of the ninth. So there were a lot of home runs that game. They ran together. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That was the rubber game last year in Seattle. These two teams meeting in consecutive seasons. Prior to that, they had not met since 2017. And first pitch out to right. Acuna drifting back, and he will watch it go. And just like that. We are tied at one apiece. Jared Kelnick, the center fielder, with a solo homer. Got a hanging change up. That's a dangerous pitch. It's a great pitch, lefty lefty, when you keep it down, but when you keep it up in the zone, they go a long ways. So an 0 1 pitch deposited out of here to tie the game. And now here is Suarez, or you were talking about Jeff. It's a guy that strikes out a lot, and he also hits a lot of home runs. He had a homer yesterday, a couple of hits, and three runs driven in, and he takes a strike there. It's about this time every year in Atlanta you start to see the ball carry a little bit now starting to get humid starting to get hot and you get that ball in the air especially right right center it can go. But the Braves this year have been good at hitting homers and good at limiting homers unfortunately Kelnick though hitting the first round tripper today. But the Braves have 122 runs this year via the home run their opposition less than half that 59 runs via the homer for the Braves opponents this season. Here's a 3 2 pitch and it's fouled and we'll do it all over again. A 
Suarez is still in some pain back there. Oh yeah, that got him more solid contact than I thought. That never feels good on a day game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though it hit off the brace, that one stung him pretty good. No stranger to the Braves, Suarez, seven years with the Reds, now in his second season with the Mariners, and he's down swinging as Schuster got him on a 3-2 pitch. That was a good job after you kind of sped him up inside, you go change up away and just kind of flailed at it. Good location. So as I mentioned, Suarez strikes out a lot. This guy, Hernandez, as we said in the first inning, tied with Matt Olson for the most strikeouts in all of Major League Baseball, 64 of them, takes that low. His first year in Seattle, they got him to add some pop to the lineup. He has almost 130 homers since the start of the 2018 season. Left center, lazy fly. And Harris has it, two outs. But you had Seattle in the postseason last year. It was their first trip since 2001. But as you said, Jeff, this is a team that didn't expect to be looking up at this point and be a game under 500. No, and game three against the Astros, they waited, what, 21 years for a home playoff game. Went to 18 innings and they still didn't score. <laughs> <laughs> had to get some of those butterflies out. Oh, man. Fans are crazy. They were pumped up and. You know, as you said, it's kind of a, an interesting lineup. They have a lot of power, but like you said, there's there's a lot of strikeouts too in that lineup. AJ Pollock fouls it back 0-2. That playoff drought was the longest in the four major sports in North America when they hadn't been in since 2001. 21 years. But now they don't have to hear about that anymore. They've tied the game on the Kelnick homer since then Suarez struck out Hernandez flew out and now A.J. Pollock the left fielder. Takes a one two downstairs. Pollock one of their veterans 35 years of age first year in Seattle. Swing and a miss. Schuster strikes out two. Gives up the homer, but then settles back in. The bottom of the second. Brandon God, Jeff Francoeur, Nick Green here with you for the rubber game of this three-game set. On a 77-degree afternoon here in Atlanta, Georgia. Ozzy Albies takes a strike. Ozzy one for six in the series. And George Kirby fires home high going back to that fastball at ninety seven. Ozzie grounds it to the second baseman Caballero hits it to his counterpart 4 3 on your scorecard one away. Our Xfinity game changer feature is what Marcelo Zuna has been doing in May. You talk about flipping a switch Jeff. Well I'll tell you what after May I don't think any of us thought that 
his numbers would be where they're at. But 17 hits in May after only five in March and April. He's averaging a home run every eight and a half at bats this month. And again, a couple of hits last night and just looks really good at the plate. He had a couple on Friday as well. Four more hits in the series and three runs driven in. Go back to when we went to Miami, man. He got hot and has not stopped since. Down the right field line foul. And Nick, you talked to him about his hot hitting, correct? I did, and he mentioned uh, Miami specifically. He said the machine in Miami, because these guys like to do a lot of machine work. He said it was a little bit inconsistent, and the machine was throwing the ball a little bit slower, wasn't coming out that clean. So it allowed him to start to stay back and back the ball up a little bit more. So now He's working on change ups off the machine and slow spin as well. Yeah he found himself down in Miami. Yeah look whatever he's done just keep doing it. When we were in Texas last week I was talking to him about the ballpark and contrasting that with the roof and the roof in Toronto as this one is fair Suarez slips and that's going to go as a hit another one five hits in the series now for Marcelo Zuna. Yeah, I told you I think you said in Miami we played with him we call each other Poppy and I've continued to say Poppy got another hit. <laughs> he's hot. Even if he makes that I don't think he's going to throw him out that yeah. far off. See he just slips. But what Ozuna said I said what's your favorite park and he goes Miami. I go, <laughs> yeah yeah should have known <laughs> outside of truest yeah. of course he, we were talking road parks and he quickly said Miami. Now Orlando Arcia. Arcia the other way but this will be routine. Hernandez gloves it and there are two outs. He probably looked at you like come on man what, what do you think. <laughs> You know I was interested though to get I was talking with him and a couple of the other guys about if you're in a ballpark like Texas do you like the roof open do you like it closed it seems like most guys like it open when the ball carries a little bit more. Yeah and you know remember we said when we were in Miami and they had the left field just even the, the uh, windows, windows yeah. open the ball carries better. Now in midsummer I can tell you they like it closed. <laughs> Bottom of the order, Michael Harris. You have that thing open at about 110 degrees yeah. and just yeah. trap the heat. Yeah. No, thank you. It was open all three games in Toronto and then closed all three games in Texas because there was a chance of rain every day. Shadow left center, long run for everybody, and it's going to be Crawford who goes out and grabs it. A single and nothing else for the Braves. First series of this homestand tomorrow the Dodgers come to town for three and then the Phillies for four. So ten straight games here at Truist Park for the Atlanta Braves. Eight nine one. Tom Murphy the catcher batting eighth in the order. And Schuster starts him off with a swing and a miss. I was thinking of you in Toronto that Friday night the Maple Leafs got knocked out up there. I was going to see if they were in mourning up there. <laughs> Well they turned the card quickly over to baseball season because they had great crowds the day after they were eliminated. <laughs> I will say the vibe in Toronto that night with both the Blue Jays and the Maple Leafs playing was pretty cool. It was, awesome, it yeah. was yeah the city was electric. Schuster's 0 2 hard hit but there's Riley. And he dropped it ranging over toward the line however after all that Tom Murphy wasn't running so it works out anyway. Instead of a line out to the third baseman it's just five three on the put out. You don't see that too much. It's almost like he was just switching it over to his hand and. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame Murphy. I'm stopping there too. Once see him catch it. Ooh, inside, and that hits Jose Caballero. Yeah, you hate that too. The nine-hole hitter giving him a free base. 
And anytime you see a guy, he's got the elbow guard, the knee thing, and he's way up on the plate. He's ready to be hit with a he's baseball. He's ready to go <laughs> if it comes in there. Yeah, he's a young rookie, Jose Caballero, and now he's down there at first. Top of the order, here's J.P. Crawford. Crawford had a little weak pop out to Riley in the first. But what else I was going to say about Toronto, I'd never been north of the border for anything, but that was awesome. I would say if you're a baseball fan looking for a spot to go that you haven't been, go see a Blue Jays game. I up love there. Toronto. And they, you know, I obviously went on the trip, but they redid the outfield fence and everything too. It looked great. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Back towards us. Uh, just a beautiful ballpark. And they're going to put another 150 million into that place after this season as well. I always say just like Seattle too out there getting great crowds. Put a good product on the field and some guys that you want to come. People will pay to come see you play. Mm -hmm. And Toronto's got a great team just like these two teams here. Braves four and a half up in the NL East coming into today's action. Seattle six games back in the AL West. Thing is if you knew the Braves were first okay would you imagine the Marlins would be that team no, that's behind I the know. Braves. They're hanging tough. They just can't beat the Braves. <laughs> Which is a good right? thing for the yeah. Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah the Marlins have won just a ton of one run games. They have runner goes swing and a miss. This throw is offline though. Caballero also got a good jump so he's in scoring position and the count is two and two. I don't think Travis really ever got a good grip on this ball either. Yeah, the Mets 500 right now, and the Phillies three games under. Look, there's a long way to go. Oh, yeah. We we talked about how the Braves have had slow starts the last couple of years and turned it around. So you figure the Mets and Phillies, they won't always have those records. Oh, Caballero got a great jump again, and he stole it again. He was dancing down to third before Schuster ever went into his motion. Man, I was just praying Schuster would take a look back because he had him picked off if he would have just stepped off. Watch this. Just never looked back, hadn't perfectly timed him. That's one of those Travis, no matter what, never had a chance. So now the infield comes in with one out and a 3 2 count on J.P. Crawford. Braves got out in front last night 2 nothing then the Mariners had seven unanswered runs. Swing and a miss good pitch by Schuster. And that's a big second out. Man, yeah, great job. You have an aggressive hitter in Crawford guy at third. He wants to put the ball in play. So what does Schuster do? A little slider off the plate. And Crawford goes for it. That's the third strikeout for Jared Schuster. And now he'll try to get Ty France and keep this a 1 1 game. But yesterday, those seven unanswered for the Mariners, and they would get the 7 3 win. Friday, the Braves won 6 2 with Marcelo Zuna driving in three. Good block by Darno. Two zero -oh out to right center. Harris goes back and then adjusts and makes the catch. I guess the end justifies the means. That's two bullets to center. France and Harris has got it both times. <laughs> one one. Self insurance best coverage. Ronald Acuna. I mentioned a ten game hitting streak. Here are the numbers in that ten game hit streak. It's unbelievable. He scored a run in eight, eight, uh, nine of those eleven games now after today leading off and. 16 hits and he hits this one to left center but 
over his Pollock and on the edge of the track he's got it. But once again Ronald Acuna is all over the baseball. He's got to be the front runner right now for NL MVP. Uh, right? You think? <laughs> I mean, I mean I, I'll, I'll be honest. The way everything's going right now, I said you could have two of the biggest runaways we've seen in a long time with Acuna here and uh, Shohei Otani in the American mm -hmm. League. And this guy's having a heck of a series: two homers, three doubles, five driven in. Kirby deals to Olsen and Olsen takes a strike fastball at 97 miles an hour. I mean you go look through the numbers. I mean there's really no one close to what Ronald's doing right now in the National League. Because there are areas where he's not number one in the National League but he's just so consistent of being in the top three in virtually in every, every category. Exactly. And we always talk how you know the the word five tool player gets thrown around way too easy to me but he truly does have the ability on all five things to do it at any time change a game <laughs> two two to Matt out of play mentioned he's hit a homer in back to back games those are the only two homers for the Braves in this series and Matt is now third in the National League in home runs with 13 of them behind Pete Alonzo and Max Muncy and Max Muncy and the Dodgers visit tomorrow that would just miss three and two. Downstairs and a walk. So one out, one on. Pretty good pitch. Try by Kirby. He's trying to front door a two seamer there. Everything had kind of been away. And he got location, just the ball was two down in the zone. And Matt, of course, you know, we talk how the strikeouts are high. The walks are also high. And he's going to take his walks too. Three true outcomes are big with Mr. Olson. Yeah. Austin Riley struck out in the first. But we said at the top of the broadcast George Kirby does not walk many. I mean he comes into today with only four walks on the season and over 50 innings pitch. So that that was his fifth walk issued there to Olson on the year. Which I think sometimes as a hitter you know you don't mind it in the fact that look you know this guy's going to throw strikes. I got to be ready to swing the bat. That being said. Because of the velocity, because, you know, look, he's pretty tall out there, six, four and a half or so, and he's able to pitch you the top part of the zone. You also have to make sure, like you said, you're aggressive down in the zone. Well, there you go. Fastball high, and Riley went after it. That's where George Kirby can get you into trouble. Well, you said it, what, only one home run to right handed hitters in his last 23 starts? Which is crazy. Yeah. So his two strikeouts both have come with Austin Riley batting. Struck him out swinging in the first again here in the third, and now Darno. Olsen with a walk. He's down at first. Two away now here in the home half of the third. 1-1. One, one. Kirby is from Rye, New York, which is just 25 miles north of Yankee Stadium, but he actually played his college ball at Elon over in North Carolina. And he gets a foul ball there, one and two. The Phoenix, right? The Phoenix, that's yeah. right. West Durham. West Durham. With our West. Good, good friend. He's probably sitting on the porch watching us right now. Or he's out getting 18 in because the 
golf's on yeah. and wants to get back home for the finish. No, of that's it. tomorrow. Yeah. That's Everybody plays golf tomorrow after a major. <laughs> when you go out and you feel like yep. you're one of those guys. Yep. Right center. Let's see if this gets down. It will. Falls in front of Hernandez. Olsen chugs into third and they're at the corners. He looked like he was going to catch this one. He was coming on strong. See a little slider there at the end of the bat, but he's able to dump it right in front of Hernandez. And good job by Matt getting first to third. See if Eddie Rosario can put the Braves back in front. 13 driven in on the season for Eddie. Big swing, but he's late. Eddie is hitless in the series. He's due. He's 0 for 8. Fouls it back, and he's down here quickly 0 and 2. George Kirby has been having success in these counts with fastballs high. Let's see what he deals here. And he reaches for it, singles into center, and the Braves have the lead back. Olsen scores, it's two to one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Kirby's going to be mad at himself here. An aggressive hitter in Rosario. He had a 0 2 and he tried to throw a changeup. Only throws that about 5% of the time, Brandon. And kind of threw it right where Eddie, you can see, he's gearing up for that fastball. He gets out front. And he's able to poke it up the middle. Sometimes where you, you try to trick someone or go away from what your strength is, and it might have cost him a run. Or it did cost him a run. And a 2 1 lead. Eddie's at first. You got Darno out at second. Chance to add on to the lead here, Ozzie Albies. Yeah, you said it, that changeup, he only throws at 5%. The four seamer is what he, he lives with, and we, we've seen that. He fires that over 40% of the time, does Kirby. There's the mix today. Ozzie does have 11 2 out RBI this year, and that leads the team. See if he can add to that total. Kirby's 1 2 high with a fastball. Ozzy gives it a little bit of a ride, but not enough of one. Hernandez just in front of the track. He's got it. But the Rosario RBI single gives the Braves the lead. The innings. He doesn't let any grass grow under his feet, Jeff. Well, like a lot of us, you can tell he's ADD and doesn't know how to just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rick Granite's probably sitting there telling him, just sit down, relax. All right, buddy. It's hot. I need four more innings from you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Leo Mazzoni rocking. I can't imagine he and Leo in the same dugout <laughs> together. Kranitz at least knows how to sit still. Rodriguez, 3 4 5 scheduled here for Seattle. When I'd get a day off, man, I would be walking up and down the thing. And I remember one time Bobby Cox telling me, just go away. Go, <laughs> go in the film room, go upstairs. It's like you're making me nervous. <laughs> this one is laced on the ground, Arcia. 
takes care of Julio Rodriguez. You not being able to sit down, yeah, I, can't, right? I can't imagine that. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I I know you were locked into all the broadcasts on the road trip when you weren't working, and so Peter Moylan and I, when Schuster got called up and we're in Texas, and we get in there the same time that he does to the ballpark, and he's carrying a huge bag. And I told this story during the Texas series, but he's getting ready to pitch. And he's asking where the clubhouse is, and Peter points to the left. It wasn't the clubhouse is to the right. So Schuster walked an extra 100 yards, carrying Jeez. about a 100-pound bag before going out there and throwing. That's probably why he gave up a couple of those hits in the fourth <laughs> inning, because of Peter. All Peter's fault. Wearing the poor kid out before he even starts. <laughs> yeah, he gave up the three runs in the fourth against Texas, and that was it. He went five, so far giving up the one here. That one mistake to Jared Keldick, the solo homer in the second. I will tell you, it's funny, you know, when because <clears throat> the kids' activities, you know, whatever. By the time you get home now, though, and I turn it on, it's like in the sixth inning. <laughs> you know, we're used to go back, and it's like you turn it on at 8:15, and oh, it's still in the bottom of the second. No. Now you're in the fifth. They're humming along this year, that's for sure. One, two from Schuster, and he got the corner call. And Kelnick, who hit the homer last time, goes down looking here. Yeah, good job by Travis. Ball's definitely off the plate, but he frames it good and gets a strikeout. It's Chad Guccione who's calling the balls and strikes today. Edwin Jimenez is out at second. Your local play-by-play -play announcer had that reversed when he's announced it back in the first inning. You know, you give me two days off and I'm writing in the umpires in the wrong spots. Chris Guccione, even worse. Yeah. Not Chad. Chad's his brother. I wasn't going to call you out on it. I was just going to No, you should go. have. You should have. Oh, and two. Spent a couple days with your mom and dad in Texas. That's and right. You're just all out of whack. Yeah. yeah. Got to get back in the swing of things here. That went a little downstairs to Suarez. Speaking of names, Jared Schuster, every time I hear it, I think of Juju Smith Schuster. Absolutely. The wide receiver. That's nice with Schuster, too, is, you know, we talked last time, 66 pitches only in five innings. Same thing here today, 56 with a chance to get mm -hmm. through the four. So definitely pounding the zone coming at guys. That was his recipe for success in the spring, and he gets Suarez swinging here. It's a one, two, three, top of the fourth for Jared Schuster. Ozuna in the second inning, get a base hit on a curveball. I talked about what he had been doing off the machine, trying to get some slow change up, slower spin, breaking balls, and that's helped him stay back a little bit. Yesterday, he saw 20 pitches, he saw one fastball. In his first at bat today, he saw two fastballs and a couple breaking balls as well. But it's just crazy to think how these guys have to make these adjustments on the fly, and Marcel's starting to do that. And that single in the second takes his hit streak to eight games now. This ground ball, however, will be gobbled up by Crawford, and there's one away. He got a little jammed on that one, and it was a fastball finally. Right, right one ready for it. And now Orlando Arcia. You know, we talked about it before the game with the Dodgers coming in and the Phillies. You don't want to blow this game out of proportion like, oh, this is a huge game today. But sure would be nice to get that series win heading into the next two. It's been a tough look at Baltimore, then Boston, Toronto, Texas, now Seattle, then the Dodgers and Phillies. It's a tough stretch here in May. Another opportunity for Crawford. Two out. Hey, suit up this season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Atlanta Braves. MLBShop.com. And we said that there's that little time where you have Boston, Baltimore, then that road trip to Toronto, Texas, and then this 
10 game homestand. I remember saying it with all the injuries with everything. If you can go 500 that to me that would be perfect. Right now they're six and seven. So you get this win here today you go to seven and seven with this seven games left. And I think that's pretty darn good considering of the things you've had to do the adjustments you've had to make three bullpen games. Yeah, the volatility in the rotation to go through at 500 would be, I think, a win. You're yeah, right. Yeah, you say, hey, keep your head above water when when things aren't right, and that's exactly what's going on with all the injuries. This is going to be a one-two-three inning, and all three outs are going to be recorded by the captain of the infield, Crawford. On we go to the fifth. Fantastic crowd on a really nice Sunday afternoon here at Truist Park. Brandon Gordon, Jeff Francourt, Nick Green with you. On we go to the fifth. Braves up 2 1. And Jared Schuster back to work. And he starts Hernandez off with a strike. Seattle finishing up a three city road trip. They went to Detroit, to Boston, and they will head home on a long flight after this ball game here today. And it is a long flight. <laughs> 2,000 miles as the crow flies. If you want to drive it, it's 39 hours. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> I have to break that up in a, a week trip. <laughs> that would be a tough one. And Braves will be heading out west to play Oakland and then Arizona after this homestand. Hernandez flew out to center back in the second. He's down here, ball in two strikes, and time is called. Okay, so far today, Schuster to these right-handed hitters has really done a good job with his changeup. And when he's missed, he's missed, missed down in the zone, so he can't really get hurt. And a good pitch there gets Hernandez strikes him out six K's now for Jared Schuster and three in a row <clears throat> got Kelnick looking on a fastball Suarez on an off speed pitch and now the slider to get the Oscar Hernandez working both sides of the plate only the fourth game of his major league career but that is his career high he had not struck out more than four in a game prior to today Pollock. Albies had him shaded towards the middle and that allows him to take care of business. Well since he hit Caballero back in the third he is now set down seven in a row. He'll try to make it eight in a row as he faces the catcher Tom Murphy. Murphy who had an injury riddled 2022 only played 14 games before injuring his shoulder had season ending surgery. It's been around a while though debuted with the Rockies way back in 2015 and then came to the Mariners in 2019. Well if he can locate his pitch as Schuster and keep that ball down he's making a case for hanging around here with the injuries to the rotation with two spots open absolutely I'll give you this every time foul tip two and two and again just the important thing too though is pitch count like you said sixty six here through five is not burning that bullpen so much I always say you talk. When you think about a bullpen man you want him you want to great for 162 not just 60 games and even more so in Atlanta a lot of times you forget when it starts getting 100 degrees in July and August you know those guys can't be throwing that much three and two 
I know a lot of the fans are really anxious at the possibility of maybe getting Soroka back at some point but they're being very careful with him coming back from those injuries again I think when when he comes back you'd like to have him here and not look back and so I think they're waiting for the right time. Off the end of the bat it'll be a long throw for Arcia but it's catcher speed and Murphy is beat down the line eight in a row retired by Jared Schuster. Is our A-list member of the game. He's been that since 2021 a member of the A-listers his favorite A-list perk dedicated to the Braves how they are making him feel special every time that he comes to Truist Park and. That's his favorite perk. So congratulations to Clay, today's A-list member of the game. Top of the order, Ronald Acuna. And there's a strike. Ronald singled in the first. He hit one just shy of the track out and left in the third. And he drops his bat and gives another look to Kirby on a high and inside fastball. One one to left Pollock is over and he tracks it down one away. Man that's one two as a hitter. <clears throat> you love to you would have loved to pound that ball in the left center gap man. Guy's going to come up and in and, and you can see look though he. He's barely got him jammed both times but for him that's probably the only way he's going to get Ronald out. Now Matt Olson who had the RBI double in the first he walked in the third. I had an epiphany about Olson yesterday. Tell me if you agree or disagree Jeffrey. He looks like a mixture. Of two guys Mark Teixeira. Oh. And Chris Klein who played Oz in American Pie. <laughs> Do you, that's what I see when I see Matt wow. Olson. I don't know if. You agree or disagree? Man, I got to see if Matt can sing because Chris <laughs> Klein, when he in the, uh, didn't he remember in American Pie? Yeah. Didn't he joined the chorus. With yes, he that did. Girl or whatever. Yep, he did yeah. indeed. <laughs> did you tell him that? I did not. I plan to what though. He says. Yeah, this is what hits me at three in the morning when I can't sleep. That's who Matt Olson looks like. And he goes down. 98 mile per hour fastball there from George Kirby. Two outs. Austin Riley's the batter. I think about changing a dirty diaper at three in the morning. Well, <laughs> that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> that's something I don't have to worry about at this stage of the game. Riley has struck out twice, both times swinging. This time he's not striking out, but he may reach. And no, he won't. Boy, uh, talk about a lucky bounce off of Crawford right to oh, Suarez. Man. All they could do is laugh about it. That he was happy the way he performed well. He's been even better today. He's our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Take a look at this five innings, no walks, six strikeouts. And guys, when you look at the percentage of pitches he's thrown today, 38% are sliders. I mentioned earlier the timing and his delivery. If you don't have good timing in your delivery, you're not going to be able to lean on something like that. He's been able to lean on that slider day. It has been really good. And that slider usage above average. You said 38% through his first three starts. It was 28%. And then again, only 69 pitches through the first five innings. Now 70. Here comes 71. As he faces Caballero. But look Schuster had those two starts he had some struggles in them April 2nd and April 7th against Washington and San Diego. And he was sent back to triple A didn't know when he would get his next opportunity but he looks I think so much more calm and confident out there than he did those first two starts. Well, I think that's what you like Brandon about any time a young guy gets experience like that is he takes exactly what he knows he needs to work on because he did it up here. 
and goes down to triple A and works on those things. You know, now it might not always look great numbers wise, but you know, it, it's everything's a little different sometimes. I, you know, the guy that pitched Friday night for the uh, Mariners, what Bryce Miller or whatever, that guy was like going forth like a six something in double A. He's come up four starts in the big <laughs> leagues and he looks like Nolan Ryan. Yeah. So. You know that's one thing in talking to Rick Kranitz that I've learned and he started to tell me this in the spring Jeff is yes the numbers when you're in double and triple A matter they want to have good numbers obviously but they're looking at so much more than that as to how the guy is approaching the hitters it's not always ERA and home runs allowed it's it's so much more than that as to whether they're ready to come to the major league level absolutely that's why you have guys down there checking it out seeing what they need to work on seeing the matchups too. Checking over to Caballero. Interestingly, Caballero, the nine hole hitter, who hasn't had a ton of success this year. It's the only guy that Schuster has not retired. He hit him with a pitch in the third. Now he walks him here in the sixth. That stopped the string of eight in a row set down by Schuster. Now Caballero goes for second. But he's safe. Say Arcia's tag was applied a little late. That's now three stolen bases in this game for Jose Caballero. He might have just got in there, but what a throw by Travis. I mean, he puts this ball right on the money. I think he just. Yeah, just got that left hand in there. And Brian Snicker says he does not want to review it. So Caballero representing the tying run. He's at second with nobody out. So he goes back now to that slider away. Got Crawford last time with the runner on third and only one out to chase it. Colin McHugh starting to heat up in the Braves pen. Left center could be trouble, but it won't be. The wind tailing it towards Rosario, and he's got it for the first out. And another great job last time, as I said, runner on third, less than one out. He got the strikeout. Now this time gets the fly ball to left field to keep the runner at second base. And now Ty France, an all-star from a year ago. Right field, right at Ronald. He's got it. Caballero will tag up and go to third, but there are now two away. With those three steals, Caballero, first Mariner to do that in a game since 2019. And why it was so important keeping at second base. <clears throat> Crawford's able to get him over there. That's a sack fly tie ball game. Now, chance to get out of the inning after six with the lead. Tough guy to get here in the 2022 AL Rookie of the Year, Julio Rodriguez. And he signed a huge 14 year deal at the end of August last season. 14 years That's crazy incredible. It, it's a it's a really complex deal it actually could up in end up being 18 years when it's all <laughs> said and done but there's player and club options involved. I guess when you do that you can go ahead and buy yourself a house in Seattle probably there a yeah while. regardless of what the market's <laughs> looking like yeah. But last year I remember he, he won the home run derby. Or no, he got second to Juan Soto, but for getting second, he got seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. His salary last year was seven hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, that. yep. <laughs> but that has changed. Now he's making around fifteen a year. Well, Schuster's a strike away from getting out of this and keeping it a two to one game.
Jared Schuster has what he wants. And the one two pitch bounces into Darno. Jared's last three starts he had never worked into the sixth inning. Now he's trying to get through six. Two two. Misses outside count full. Kelnick would be next. Two down and here's the payoff. He struck him out. Great job by Schuster. He makes it through six. He has struck out seven. And the Braves have a two to one lead. The Braves in the bottom of the six and a two to one ball game. Only one hit against Jared Schuster. And that came off the bat of Jared Kelnick. That was a solo homer in the second, but he was very solid through six. Darno to left center. That ball is back. It's at the track. It's at the wall, and it's gone. First of the year for Travis Darno. Tell you what, we got to give a little credit to stop man Hal Galim up here. It's right before the inning came back. He said, how about a first pitch heater homer? And Travis, you can tell, was thinking the same thing. Look where that pitch is, though, Brandon, down in the zone where he could get extension. And in this type game, what a huge tack on run. Eddie tries to bunt. A huge tack on run indeed. And remember what we told you at the top of the broadcast about George Kirby not giving up homers to right-handed hitters. That's just the second in his last 24 starts on long balls to right handed hitters. It's great to see Travis back and healthy and know he's got the pop in the bat and he showcased it right there. Eddie Rosario had an RBI single in the third that made it a two to one game at the time. Down here, no balls and two strikes. Let me tell you, you know, he's getting. They're going to play with him, and they're talking about, you ain't had a home run yet. You've been back <laughs> a little bit now. So he finally joins the party. Hopefully, one of many to come now. Missed 27 games with that concussion, did Darno. Rosario rolls it to Caballero. And now a quick message from Zaxby's. Getting a big Zax snack is as easy as one, two, free with the Zaxby's app. Ozzy digs in. Braves trying to hand George Kirby his first loss in May. He's been really good this month with a 174 ERA. He's had seven straight quality starts after a disappointing first start to the season. He hasn't pitched too badly today, but Jared Schuster has calmed down the Seattle bats, and the Braves have the two run lead. One two to Ozzy popped up coming in from left is Pollock battling the sun and there are two away. Oh, 
Um, talk about the six innings from Schuster at a, at a big time because when you come in this game, you know you're facing a tough guy in Kirby, and runs are going to be tough to come by, which they have. But Schuster's been a little bit better. And as you said, just so important to kind of reset that bullpen with what you got coming up here with the Dodgers and Phillies. Now that in now. Get a pretty good start in Texas. Really good start today and you tell yourself all right there's one guy that we're penciling in in five days gets another start. And again that's what you got to have you got to have depth in the staff. If you're going through a full season. And most watching probably have heard at this point but last week Kyle Wright was moved from the 15 to the 60 day injured list so we know for Wright it's going to be a while. Yeah. Oh and two here to Marcelo Zuna who has five hits in this series. But he's not getting a hit here. Striking out, that'll do it. But Darno, first pitch at the bottom of the six. Yatsi, and it's three to one Atlanta. Ford dealer. By the All South Highway Safety Team, never mix drinking and driving. And by Truist, when you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Seventh inning, Jared Schuster struck out seven through six. His afternoon is done, and on comes a bullpen and Colin McHugh. And they asking only nine outs from the bullpen, which, like we said, after a bullpen game yesterday, I know for Brian Snitker, it's going to be a welcome feeling. This batter, Jared Kelnick, is responsible for the only run for Seattle, that homer back in the second. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Colin actually got the win on Friday in game one of the series through the seventh inning. Gave up just one hit, no runs. And that's when the Braves would grab the lead in that ball game and hang on to it for a 6 to 2 victory. Great start for Colin McHugh. He takes care of Kelvin. Great, just throwing a bunch of off speed to him, kind of down in the zone, getting him to swing over the top. Suarez has struck out twice, both times swinging against Schuster. Hey, stay tuned for the stretch presented by Sonovas coming up after two more outs here. Yeah, 2 and 0 to Suarez talked about his time in Cincinnati seven seasons there was an all star in 2018. And he had 49 homers in 2019 that's his career high but he certainly has the pop in the bat. And he and Ronald Acuna know each other well, both being from Venezuela. Suarez is 31, Ronald 25, six years apart, but a lot of connections between those two. 3 1 pitch, 3 and 2. Right, Suarez, aggressive hitter there. You can get him to expand if you make a quality pitch. Got him to expand a little bit, but he fouls it off down the third base side. Well, he's led the league in strikeouts twice in his career as Suarez, including last year in 2022. Let's see if McHugh can add on to that number. He won't, but he will retire him, barring something unforeseen. And Harris is able to take it for the second out. Now, yeah, good job by Colin fighting back in the count after 3 0. 
with a guy like Teoscar Hernandez who's got a lot of power on deck. Worst he can do is make it a one run game. Here is the two time silver slugger. Just one hit today for the Seattle Mariners. Colin McHugh trying to keep it that way. 1 1 pitch to Hernandez. And it just misses down and away. Well, there's the second hit of the ball game for the Seattle Mariners. It's a two out single off the bat of Teoscar Hernandez. Now he gets to chat with Oz down there at first base. As A.J. Pollock will come to the right handed batter's box. Oh yeah. Yeah he went around they'll check. And David Rackley down there first base umpire confirms 0 and 1. That's a tough thing when you face Colin you know it's just you, you don't throw hard. You know you're only going to see 90 91 max but the movement he gets the ability to start the ball. You know middle part of the plate and it's by the white line by the time it gets there. That one way outside though two balls and a strike here to Pollock who spent last year with the White Sox bounced around Arizona and Dodgers before that. But a veteran guy that they've added to their lineup he hasn't been playing every day kind of mixed in occasionally in the outfield and in the DH spot he's in left the day. And he takes a 2 1 pitch and grounds it to the left side to Riley. Riley charges throws across side retired two out hit and nothing else. Before we get to the stretch it's got less America time and performing that here this afternoon is none other than Timothy Miller. With the singing of God Bless America, performed by Braves Opera Tenor, Timothy Miller. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. Bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. spot feature of the game as we go to the bottom of the seventh with the Braves leading three to one. 
Orlando Arcia, boy, has he been a bright spot. He was good before the injury, and he's been good since the injury, and he's reached space safely in eight of those 11 games since coming back. Jeff's here. He's just throwing out Cracker yeah, Jack back. to the I'm fans. Ready. He's been great. <laughs> You know, I, I feel really badly. I threw out three Cracker Jack. Two of them hit children. I did on see that, one and one you. And one hit a dad holding a toddler. Yeah. And so I think now I'm, I'm banned from that exercise. We might have, yeah, we might have to just let you sit yeah, here. Yeah, we'll just leave it to the professional. You get a little too excited to throw <laughs> but, things out You know, it's fun. But you're, you're much better at it than I am. <laughs> You know, Orlando, we, we saw those numbers. He's been so good offensively, but again, just the defensive stability he brings to shortstop has been huge. Only one error this year. And we've talked about it when you had Vaughn Grissom up, and Vaughn hit well, and Vaughn's trying to adjust to the position at the major league level, but it's just different. RC has got the experience. He started in Milwaukee for four years. He's just such a sure handed infielder and one of the strongest arms in baseball too. He's swinging and missing here though and there's one away in the bottom of the seventh. We welcome you to Hyundai Sunday Braves and Mariners from Truist Park. Hyundai Sunday fun day here. In Atlanta with the Braves on top three to one on a gorgeous afternoon. And also now you've got Braden Shoemake back down at Triple A and Brian Snitker said like we said earlier Jeff you just need those guys he and Vaughn getting reps. Yeah it doesn't do any good for Braden to sit on the bench and play once every two weeks. As Harris pops this out to Pollock, two outs. No, we have a lineup that, for the most part, everybody you know is playing every day, and so you kind of know what your role is. And be interesting to see here. Last time up, Kirby threw a couple high and in these two at bats, and Ronald has had a little stare down. You know, Ronald's looking to get one out front here and clip him. Are you predicting fireworks, Jeff? Yeah, no, nah, I'm just foreshadowing. <laughs> Well, he stays away there. He got the corner call, 0 and 1. And Kirby comes inside. Ronald swings. No balls. Two strikes. Took a little bit off that one. 89. It's a sinker, but I don't think that was his changeup. Kept his pitch count down. This is the 88th pitch for the right hander, and he got Acuna. And it's a 1 2 3 bottom of the seventh. On we go to the eighth. Game break Dodgers and Cardinals. Oscar Mercado, two RBI double. And that would make it three to nothing cards. It's now three to one as they stand at the top of the fourth. And the Dodgers, after finishing off the series in St. Louis, will head down here to Atlanta. Notice Clayton Kershaw was pitching in that game, which means the Braves will not have to face Clayton Kershaw over the next three days. Now he's off to a great start, and Cardinals starting to play a little better baseball. Yeah, they're picking it up. Starting to get going a little bit. This guy's been pitching really, yeah. really well this year for Atlanta. Again, I go back and think when we were down there at spring training, Brandon, you remember, he got sent down. Only going to make the team on the opening day roster, and because of an injury, he got back up. And all intents and purposes, he's turned into the eighth inning guy to set up Iglesias right now. And Cal Raleigh will step in here and pinch hit for Tom Murphy. And he takes a 95 mile per hour fastball for a strike. Quickly 0 and 2. I just think it's got to be tougher on catcher. Sometimes I can hit a little bit like this where they think they're getting a day off. And I know I'm sure he was prepared, but it's got to be tough to sit on that bench and get it revved up. See 96 97 with a nasty curve. 
He's the switch hitting catcher in the platoon with Tom Murphy. And they will check. He did not go one and two. You know what his nickname is out in Seattle, right? This is this is true. It's it's big dumper. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember that last year? They actually have shirts that yeah, are oh, yeah. sold routinely out there with that nickname on there. It's, it's well deserved nickname. Yeah. Baby got back. I mean that's uh, that's where he gets that power yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, that posterior size 37 waist. But he's going down looking. Nick Anderson painting the black on the inside corner. Yeah, well, one thing he's done such a good job as you can see drops that curveball in him. Got him looking. First batters he's faced now 0 for 19 this year. So you talk about no traffic. Great job. That's a pretty incredible stat. What a way to come out of the bullpen and set the tone. So he gets big dumper and now he deals to Caballero. Caballero is the only guy for Seattle that has not been retired but he doesn't have a hit. He was hit by a pitch. He walked and he's stolen three bases in this game. Thankfully he has not scored. Going to grill out tonight with the family, Jeffrey? Yeah, definitely got some pool time ahead of me. I know that. Proud of you. This is a great night after this ball it game to put a burger on the grill. We had that heavy downpour after the game last night, but thankfully all that rain moved through and today's been clear. Yeah, going to be a fun week. Last week of school for all most kids here in Atlanta. Got a great homestand. Continuing with the Dodgers and Phillies. An outcast bobblehead night on Thursday at the park. This one out to left. Drifting back is Rosario. It's gone into the bullpen. Jose Caballero with a solo homer to make this a one run ball game. It's his first home run of his major league career. Well, that's why baseball can be so crazy. There's one guy you would say was, would not get out today, would not be the nine hole hitter. But he got a fastball middle end. Drove it in the Mariners bullpen pretty deep. Well, congratulations to Caballero. He was called up on April 15th after starting the season at Triple A Tacoma. And that's the first homer. In a major league uniform. And now he <laughs> gets the trident to celebrate. Darno's home runs looming very big now. Absolutely. Popped up. This is Orlando Arcia territory. Two outs. And here's a quick message from Georgia Drive Chevy. Chevy Silverado. The number one selling full size pickup in the greater Atlanta area. See your local Chevy dealer. So Anderson gives up the solo homer, but now just trying to keep this a 3 2 game with Ty France the batter. Two times he is hit it out to Harrison Center, and then last time out to Acuna and right. He's 0 for 3. Saw him kind of lean the elbow in. Yeah. We talked about Caballero. This is a guy who gets hit by a ton of pitches here in France. Led the majors two years ago. Got hit 27 times. He got hit 21 times last year. Well, and you see, look, you see he's susceptible to that slider low and away. So what do guys do? They try to come in, get him thinking in so they can go away. And look, you come in a bunch, you're going to get hit. See what Anderson goes with here. Two down, one ball, and two strikes. Got him. 
Down goes France, a solo homer, but it's still three to two Braves. Let's go places. By Georgia Natural Gas, live the greener life. And by Visit Mississippi, Wanderers welcome. As we go to the bottom of the eight, let's go inside the numbers. Brought to you by Hyundai. Braves this season ranking first in exit velocity, hard hit percentage, barrel percentage, and second in average home run distance. Well, that second home run distance, really first because Colorado takes home number one. Call them that. When you're 52, 5280 above sea level, gives you a little uh, advantage. Yeah, a little advantage. And Ronald Acuna is a big reason why the Braves are sitting there at second place. Taylor Saucedo is in, and the catcher Raleigh stays in, replacing Murphy behind home here as Matt Olson digs in. Saucedo, last couple years with the Blue Jays, first year now with Seattle. And this one is hit to Crawford. Kind of had that as far over as you can shift without shifting and Crawford's got it for the first out. Now a quick message from Texas Pete. Welcome to the tribe. The Texas Pete tried and true. Texas Pete sauce like a mean it. Austin Riley takes a strike here with the Braves up three two in the bottom of the eight. Up the throw back got by Saucedo. E1. <laughs> I know Austin's kind of just stuck in this little rut right now. Seems like he gets a couple hits, think he's going to get going, but say at some point he's going to get hot. Maybe this will start it. Off the glove of Suarez, and that'll be a single for Austin Riley. Another ball right down the line. We saw Marcel with one earlier, and <clears throat> Suarez is able to keep in front, but even if he feels that cleanly, there's no way he's throwing Austin out over at first. Four hits in the series now for Austin. First today. But Travis Darno has the big hit. He has the hit that is the difference in this game right now. A solo homer back in the sixth. Last year he hit a career high 18 homers. That homer in the sixth is first of 2023. On a couple of hops, they'll go to second for one, not able to turn two. And there are two down here in the bottom of the eighth. Here's a quick message from our friends at Delta. Braves country, fast free Wi-Fi is rolling out. Enjoy with a free Sky Miles membership. Delta, official airline of the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Saucedo gave a frustrated look because he saw his skipper Scott Service coming out of the dugout here before Eddie Rosario bats. We're gonna have a change. I think Pilar came up, so they're playing the matchup here. Yep. Series win on the line. Take it. A sunshiny afternoon with the Braves on top, three to two. Mariners try to keep it a three-two ball game. As Jeff mentioned, Kevin Pilar grabs a bat for Atlanta. And he will come up here with two out and Darno down at first base.
Hey, Dodgers and Braves, the series begins tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern over on Bounty Sports South and the Bounty Sports app presented by Truist as the Dodgers are in for a three-game series. One ten, his sixth game of the season here. He's done good for the Seattle bullpen. A strong bullpen. A couple guys on the shelf. Closer Munoz and a lot of times this is fine too when you do this because Pilar can play left field now for you. Defensive purposes too in the ninth. Yeah, they've had a couple of injuries to that bullpen, but you're right. They've been good coming into this series. They had the best ERA in Major League Baseball. Did that Seattle bullpen at 295. Braves got to him in the first game, but the pin was good yesterday. Pilar five homers 13 driven in this year in that role where he's not an everyday guy but he has provided great stability when he's been in there and he takes a fastball two and one. Is that it's a nice pop too? five homers for Kevin. That one foul down the third base line. Looking ahead to the ninth, it'll be three, four, five for Seattle. So they've got a dangerous part of their lineup coming up, starting with Julio Rodriguez. Two two with two down, and Pilar swings through it. To the ninth we go as the Braves look for another series win. The Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. And by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Back to Truist Park. 3-2 Braves. 82 today for Bobby Cox. As we go back to the sixth inning, we're going to take a look at something that made Bobby happy. Travis Darno's long home run as we're going to take a look at our stack cast 3D powered by Google Cloud 108 off the bat. Again, right now, looming large that difference and that home run 419 his first of the year. Like I said, I'm sure Bobby's sitting at home watching the game. Happy 82nd, Skipper. Yeah, absolutely. To the Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it. Rysel Iglesias now try to close the door on the Mariners and win this series. Facing Julio Rodriguez. Pilar stays in the game. He's out and left. Misses inside 2 and 0. Rodriguez 0 for 3 today. Little downstairs 3 and 0. That finds the strike zone to continue the at bat. After this, it'll be Kelnick and then Suarez scheduled here for Seattle. Three and two, another fastball. Yeah, we're going to get back in it. You don't want to let the leadoff guy, and this the power part of the lineup for the Mariners three, four, five. Payoff pitch. Grounder, I see ya. One out. Way to recover by Rysel Iglesias. Kelnick had that solo homer back in the second, but since then he struck out twice. And Iglesias looking for his third save on the season. Of course, he missed so much time early with the injury.
One ball, one strike. Man, Colin McHugh last time up really got him with a lot of off speed down in the zone. You see Iglesias going to that change up there. Kelnick calls time. Well, one of the reasons the Mariners are a game under 500 is they have a ton of one run losses this year 11 of them most in Major League Baseball. See if the Braves can bump that up to 12. One and two. And it's a perfect example of what we talked about earlier in the game with Kirby and Rosario change up change up go right back to that off speed down don't change anything. He struck him out. Kelnick chased away and there are two away. Well with a veteran pitcher in Iglesias and a veteran catcher in Darno, they did exactly that and got the swing and miss and now one out away from a series win. Hey, Eugenio Suarez is the batter. And Travis Dardo wants to go out and chat with Iglesias. Whatever it was, it was a quick message. The scoreboard is all ones and zeros. Oh, and one. Braves got a run in the first, the third, and the sixth. Seattle with single runs in the second and then the eighth. A strike away here from a series win. It's good news, too. You've seen two fastballs from 97 right there. So good velocity. His third save of the season, and for the Braves, Jeff, another series victory. Yeah, Glacius there. Three straight fastballs, 97, and just blew Suarez away. Hey, coming to this game, I told you Kirby's good. Braves offense did just enough, and Schuster was outstanding. Great second start since he's been recalled. Hopefully he can build on it. And tell you what, there's nothing better than a series win and a two-hour and five-minute ball game. That was a quick That's one. solid. <laughs> Extra pool time for us. <laughs> and congratulations to Jared Schuster. He gets his first major league victory. He did it striking out seven, going six innings, and the Braves win it three to two. For Jeff Francoeur, for Nick Green, for our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off from Truist Park. Stay tuned now. Braves Live Boats Game Show presented by Xfinity is coming up next. So long, everybody.